So macOS Catalina dropped a few weeks back, and it's not without its problems. So I'm not going to be talking about most of them, but today what we're going to be focusing on is how it has dropped support for 32-bit applications and the problems that this is causing, and also the way that it's now handling permissions that are also causing some problems with some apps that should be supported because they are 64-bit, but for some reason just aren't working. So if you're new around here, remember to subscribe and ding that little bell icon down below because we're trying to hit 100 subs by the end of the year and it's looking more and more likely every day. And if you do that, it will really help the channel out. So now that that's out of the way, let's have a look. So the first article that we're going to take a look at is from October the 12th. So this is, oh, can we zoom in? There we go. Nope. There we go. Cool. So why macOS Catalina is breaking so many apps and what to do about it. It's a new age for Apple software and this means being prepared for what might go wrong. So this article is from The Verge. I will put the link to it in the description down below if you want to check it out for yourself. So Apple's latest update, macOS Catalina, was dropped earlier this week. So that would have been, what, the sometime early October. I don't remember the exact date. Someone can correct me on that. And with it came a flurry of complications, both minor and major. For one, this update is the first for Apple to drop 32-bit application support, which is causing all sorts of headaches for users of smaller apps, plugins, and other software that may not be updated for quite some time, or may have been created by a company that no longer exists. So Apple is always known for being the, not the pioneer of a technology, but for the being the one who will push it forward and just run with it at all costs like regardless of what the uh, problems we're doing so are apple will do it if they want to do it and if this is going to be the case i feel like windows is probably going to follow along and maybe drop 32-bit application support in the next couple of years i don't know it might happen so there are also a fair number of other issues with catalina like adobe software incompatibility problems and unforeseen hurdles related to the removal of itunes so I'm pretty sure iTunes' uh, desktop app was removed and you have to use it through some other means now. I don't use a Mac much, so I'm not 100% sure on the details. So nothing too important there. So what's wrong with Catalina so far? So Apple first announced that it would ultimately wind down support for 32-bit apps more than half a year ago when it began pushing alerts to macOS High Sierra users that 32-bit software was unsupported. The app still worked, but with Catalina's official unveiling back in June at WWDC, Apple made the eventual discontinuation official with the launch of Catalina 32-bit apps no longer function. So this is actually a serious problem for some software and that's not just like random little pieces of software. So this has resulted in some understandably messy problems. For instance, legacy versions of Adobe products like Photoshop use some 32-bit licensing components and installers, meaning they won't work after you upgrade. Not even Adobe's Uninstaller will work post Catalina upgrade because that too is a 32-bit component. <laughs> Surely someone realized that doing this would be a bad idea, but this is the Apple way. Push it forward regardless of the cost, just make it work. So Adobe recommends you not to update your Mac if you rely on this older pre-creative cloud version of Photoshop or Lightroom. It also says that even if you do upgrade, you should probably uninstall the software first or else it will be difficult to get rid of once it's rendered inoperable. <laughs> Other popular pieces ensnared by this 32-bit to 64-bit transition include older versions of Microsoft Office, numeracy legacy versions of even first-party Mac apps like GarageBand and discontinued apps like iPhoto. For those who do play games on Mac, it's likely quite a few are 32-bit and there's no way to salvage them after upgrade to Catalina. So gaming on a Mac is pretty much dead for the time being if you're on Catalina because most games are in 32-bit because it's just easier to write them like that. So I'll go over this link in a bit where it talks about the 235 apps that are discontinued. So, but the issues extend below, uh, beyond lost 32-bit app support. Due to incompatibility issues, even newer versions of Photoshop installed and managed using Creative Cloud are having file naming issues, plugin verification problems, and video rendering hiccups. Adobe says it, on its support page for the issues that droplets, extend toolkit, and lens profile creator will flat out fail to run. So this is just talking about more apps that are broken. So should you upgrade now? If you do want to upgrade, there are some easy ways to figure out if your machine will be hit hard by the 32-bit loss. 
Apple has gone out of its way to ensure that when you do choose to install the new OS, you will be uh, made aware of the software installed in your machine that won't be supported post update. And that's actually really nice. Apple could have just thrown out 32-bit support without thinking about its users, but at least they've given the ability to find out what applications are not going to function on this newer version. So this is just this person talking about their old applications that won't function. So if you're like me, uh, you don't use highly specialized apps and you're not using a four or five year old Mac, you mostly use your newish laptop or desktop for web browsing, general productivity stuff, calendar notes, file management, etc., light media creation and editing and writing. In that scenario, upgrading to Catalina is reasonable and won't likely cause you too much trouble. But if you are a, say, a user of homebrew software, you might have a lot of difficulty. And I really hope that people can sort this out, maybe come up with some way to make a compatibility layer or something. I don't know if that's possible or otherwise there's going to be a lot of software that just won't run on macOS Catalina. So you probably do want to hold off if you are using a older MacBook with, or an older just Mac device with any software that is not from the main Apple ecosystem. Even then there's still software that you're still pretty screwed on if you are in the Mac ecosystem. In the event that you do end up holding out, there is one thing that you want to do. Head over to the settings, click software update and uncheck the box for automatically keep my Mac up to date. That will ensure that your Mac doesn't try to sneakily install the update on your behalf. Most Mac users have this box checked by default, so you'll have to manually turn off the setting to avoid a forced Catalina install. So the main problem with this, besides the dropping of 32-bit app support, is that a lot of Apple users are the kind of people who just instantly click upgrade because on your iPhone, you're not going to have issues like this. When you just instantly install the newest version, you're probably not gonna run into any major compatibility issues like this. But when it comes to your computer, there's a lot more diversity in the applications that you're running, especially if you're running stuff that doesn't just come from the App Store. So I hope that someone can deal with this. It probably won't get dealt with, it'll probably just be thrown under the rug and no one will think about it in a couple of months from now. So here's this list of uh, applications that are not supported and there's a lot of really popular applications on here that are not supported. So Transmit, haven't heard of that one myself, 1Password, iStats Menu, BoxSync, QuickBooks, SugarSync, Default Folder, VMware Fusion. That is uh, quite bad. And it gets better. Creative Cloud. Apple, the supposedly creative computer developers, don't support Creative Cloud. At least this version of Creative Cloud. And Parallels, which I believe is a way to, if I'm not mistaken, use multiple, use a keyboard and mouse on multiple devices. I think that's something like that. So there's a link in here to download the list if you're interested in it yourself. So if all of your apps are 64-bit apps, don't worry because you can still join in the fun of your software not actually working. So here's an article from The Register. So not LibreOffice 2, beloved open source suite falls victim to the curse of Catalina. So move to bin or cancel. There are more options on this version of macOS, but it's still a PITA, whatever that means. Users who download and attempt to run LibreOffice on the new macOS Catalina are presented with two options, move to bin or cancel. So in the face of being told that the developer cannot be verified, savvy users will know that there must be more options and there are. If you cancel the dialog and head to security and privacy and preferences, where there is a dialog option alongside the blocked application to open anyway, then you get another warning message, but this time with an option to take, you, uh, take your chances and open. The good news is that you only need to do this once and it is a considerable annoyance. So basically what happened is that if your application isn't released through the Mac App Store, you have to get it basically verified by Apple. Otherwise it's going to say that this application may not be safe and you have to then go through your security and privacy settings to actually install it. So Apple reminded developers earlier this month that, map, uh, that apps must be notarized to run on Catalina. In June, we announced that all Mac software distributed outside the Mac App Store must be notarized by Apple in order to run by default on macOS Catalina. Make sure to test all versions of your software on the macOS Catalina GM seed and submit it to Apple to be notarized. So it's fair they have this process. If you're going to have a verification process and you're going to verify apps outside of the App Store, that's entirely fair. However, the LibreOffice team says that it has duly followed the instructions and that 
LibreOffice 6.3.x has been notarized by Apple. <laughs> so they've got it notarized. It's just not working for some reason because I don't know. The project has also posted information about how to work around the block, adding, we will sort out the issue with Apple in order to avoid similar issues in the future with macOS Catalina. So this is not actually the end of it. So the GIMP image editing application also has problems giving permission errors when trying to access files in locations such as desktop and documents. <laughs> what should happen is that macOS prompts you for permission, but this dialog is not being triggered. A workaround is to run GIMP from the command line visiting any required folders from the uh, command line before launching the application. The thread referenced above has more details, so if, I'll probably put this link in the description down below as well. So although tightening a security is a good thing, the great number of prompts generated by Catalina are not only annoying, but also put risk, uh, users at risk of dialogue fatigue, where they become so used to giving permissions to harmless applications that they also instinctively approve warnings that should not be ignored. So this is the same problem that arises on Windows where you constantly get applications like I need to run, I need to run, I need to run. And a lot of people will just ignore what the dialogue says and will run malicious software without thinking about it. I understand what Apple is doing here, but I think they've done it in a very heavy handed way. But that is, I guess, the Apple way. It's very similar to the way that uh, iOS and Android also handle permissions where basically to do anything on your system you have to be asked that's where you get your those little prompts like this uh, application wants to access your cameras wants to access your camera log things like that I think that Apple is probably going to head down that route where it's going to make applications ask for permissions to access certain folders I get the point of sandboxing but it has a lot of issues when it's implemented poorly and I think that at least at this stage it kind of is, but all of this stuff can be patched out in future updates. It is not only the open source community having problems with Catalina. See here for examples of the hoops you have to jump through in order to get your Logitech Options applications, which configures mouse and keyboard working fully on the latest version of macOS. Everything will working fine on Mojave and High Sierra. It may be wise to defer upgrade to Catalina while Apple and software developers fine tune things to reduce annoyances without compromising security. I don't really think this is a serious security problem. I think it's more of a Apple trying to lock down their ecosystem more and more. If you want to keep using Apple devices, go right ahead. I'm not going to stop you, but that is the path they're going to head down. And it's as clear as day. That's not even a point that's debatable with anyone. So if you are a macOS user who does real work on their computer, or if you maybe don't live entirely within the Apple ecosystem, you might want to defer your upgrade to macOS Catalina. But honestly, with the 32-bit app support, there's not really much that can be done for that. So hey, maybe maybe come over to Linux. Maybe come over to Linux at Homebrew, guys. It's nice over here. You'll enjoy it. But I don't think that's going to happen. People love them. Apple devices way too much, and people love macOS too much. But hey, I guess I can try. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this where I cover the news and let me know because I really enjoy doing them, I actually get to read the news for once. I don't really have time to do that outside of doing videos like this. And I feel like I should probably keep up with some of it. So if you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding that little bell icon down below and you'll probably get updates. But as always, YouTube can never be trusted to push updates to anyone. So also go follow my Twitter and my Mastodon and you'll probably get updates there. So I'll also put a playlist up on that corner where I have some other check news that I cover and maybe you'll find something else to interest you in there. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out. <laughs>